The SS Army formations were in a special position. On the one hand, they, like the Wehrmacht units, had to fight the enemies of Germany directly in the field. On the other hand, they were often recruited to carry out punitive tasks, such as fight partisan formation or maintain order in the rear, in the occupied territories. In any war, there are periods of calm and breaks in active hostilities. In their free hours and even minutes, soldiers, whether SS or Wehrmacht, wrote letters home to their relatives and friends. They washed, shaved, and cleaned themselves up. Military units, including SS units, were visited by orchestras and artists. The servicemen also entertained themselves. They played cards, dominoes, and checkers. They organized photo sessions, had picnics, held sports competitions, etc. In general, it was as in any army in the world. This is all normal and completely harmless entertainment. There were also, of course, field brothels, which we have already talked about. In the rare units, there were cafes and canteens where there were special meeting rooms in which waitresses and dishwashers after lunch could intimately serve the German military for an appropriate fee, of course. However, not all the entertainment of the German army and the SS troops were so harmless especially after 1941 when Hitler's soldiers, accustomed to winning, began to go wild after the first serious defeats. And first of all, this applies to SS units, which, as already mentioned, fought not only at the front, but were also used for punitive operations in the rear. Here the entertainment of the Punishers was not so harmless, but often sadistic, going beyond human behavior. On a rainy autumn day, an SS detachment entered the village of Yaksino, near Smolensk. All village residents were herded to the square in front of the village council. Then they took away all the men, took them outside the village and shot them. Men is of course a very generous term, since only old men and teenagers remained in the village. So they were all shot. And in the village of Pachinak, all the residents, old people, women, children, were herded into the collective farm administration, the doors from the outside were propped up with sticks, and the building was set on fire. Women and children rushed and screamed in the burning building, and the punishers calmly watched the process. Passing by a village near Velish, the executioners decided to rest a little and at the same time have fun. They drove the villagers, mostly women and children, from nearby houses, drove them onto a bridge and forced them to jump into the river. Those who tried to get to the shore were shot. Those who did not drown for a long time were thrown with stones. Apparently, it was fun. Rape was commonplace. For the memoirs of a soldier of a security detachment, Peter Schuber, we went to the village of Rajdestvino near Gatchina. We had a task to bring local girls for the gentlemen, our officers. The operation was successful, we grabbed many girls from nearby houses and filled a whole truck with them. The officers had fun with the girls almost all night, and in the morning they gave them to us, the soldiers. In the city of Tikhvin, a high school student, Kaladetskaya, wounded by a stray shrapnel, was taken to a hospital for German soldiers, located in a monastery. The Wehrmacht and SS soldiers who were undergoing treatment did not miss this opportunity. The wounded girl was raped by the crowd, which is why she died. Along with rape, the Germans did not disdain outright robberies. In the city of Ljubljana, officers and soldiers wandered through the houses of local residents in search of gramophones and sewing machines. This is from an intelligence report. Moreover, not only Russian, Ukrainian and Belarusian regions, but also the Baltic republics were subjected to looting. This is from the reports of the chief of staff of the 1st military district, Colonel Gao. I have to inform you about the very deplorable facts of robberies carried out by soldiers of the Wehrmacht and SS and Lithuania. The trophies obtained in this way are sent home. Suspicious elements, who have not been convicted of serious crimes, but who due to their beliefs and behavior appear dangerous, must be transferred to the operational groups of the security police and SD. The movement of civilians without appropriate passes should be stopped, read one of the orders of the occupation authorities. The SS troops were given even more explicit instructions. You have no heart and nerves. They are not needed in war. Destroy pity and compassion in yourself. Don't stop if there's an old man or a woman, a girl or a boy in front of you. With this, you will save yourself from death, secure the future of your family, and earn fame forever.
In other words, the leadership of Nazi Germany not only forgave any crimes committed by the Wehrmacht and SS soldiers in advance, but even demanded these crimes. We have created a new type of man, Hitler declared. A race of masters and viceroys. And then he made a remark. It is natural that in the West, other approaches are needed. But let's return to the entertainment of SS soldiers. Of course, they were not limited to shootings, violence, and robbers. Sometimes the Nazis wanted, so to say, some cultural activities. For these purposes, they gathered the local population and forced them to dance, sing, play various instruments, in a word, forced them to have fun. 60 kilometers from Warsaw, among virgin forests, sticky sands and swamps, is located the small station Treblinka. This name even today evokes associations similar to the names of Mauthausen. Auschwitz, Buchenwald, etc. In the Treblinka concentration camp there was an SS man named Stumpf, who the prisoner nicknamed Laughing Death. He always laughed after he shot or hanged someone. He and his colleagues also loved to watch how one of the crazy SS men, Volksdeutsch Sviteski, rushed after the children driven into the fence perimeter with a hammer in his hands and beat everyone he could get. Once in this way, he beat to death 15 children at once. And these are the memoirs of Edmund Seidelman, a prisoner of the Lviv camp. On the way to and from the quarry, the Nazis forced prisoners to carry heavy loads, bundles of bricks, stones, logs, etc. They call it taking vitamins. If a prisoner carried bricks, it means he took vitamin C. If a log or boards, then he took vitamin D, etc. This method was used to physically deplete already exhausted people and then shoot them. In the village of Kizhnitsky, Smolensk region, the Nazi carried out a massacre before retreating. They raped all the young women and girls who fell into their clutches. In other words, they had as much fun as they could. Even minors were not spared. But the executioners did not have time to cover up the traces of their crimes. After the liberation of the village, 59 female corpses were discovered. Many had their fingers, ears, and breasts cut off. A person captured by punitive forces on suspicion of having connection with partisans could be forced by police and SS men to run in front of a horse, motorcycle, or car. Those who fell from exhaustion were immediately shot. From the memoirs of a resident of Smolensk who during the war was a 13-14 year old girl and lived in a village not far from the city. Close to the village, the Nazis set up a burial ground to which they took the people they killed. She remembered one SS man named Yegor, apparently one of the local traders, amused himself by hunting local girls who were herding cattle that the German had not yet taken away. The girls ran away. He caught up with them, pulled a gun out of the holster and pretended that he was going to shoot them. It is not hard to imagine what the poor children were going through. And the Punisher made fun of them. True, he did not kill any of the locals. The woman who experienced that met the Jaeger by chance in a tram car in 1963. Despite the years that had passed, she recognized him immediately. And she even tried to follow the man, but lost sight of him. Her letter was preserved in the KGB archives. These are the terrible entertainments that the Nazis arranged for themselves. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.